talk about the punk rave thing. Um, so hopefully by now most of you have watched that video. Um, and this is mainly for my normal viewers because I think some of you might be like, hey, what is this? You're supposed to be rambling. Um, I, I mean, I think mostly you guys have been really supportive, like, of all the weird stuff that I've done. But, um, this is going to end up being an ongoing thing. Because I did that video, um, whoa, back up. So, um, I've, I've been following Punk Rave Australia on Facebook. Um, and they came up with this ad saying, hey, we're looking for some vloggers. Um, if you get the gig, you get free clothes. And I was like, ah! So, um... Yeah, I mean, the catch was you had to have already bought something from them, so um, that's why I went and got that um, discount clearance half price t shirt, um, which was actually a really good pick. Um, and then, yeah, did that review. And that might be why some of you might have noticed, like, there are some odd things in that video. Like, for example, I never introduce myself in these videos. It's very rare for me to be like, hey guys, um, I'm me. So that was one of their requirements in the video. And then there are other things like I had to say why I wanted to be a reviewer within the video. And um, I think the intention was like I would just be talking to them in the video. But I was like, no, let's make this a thing that I can post on YouTube for my viewers as well. That like, you know, a real review that I can actually put out there regardless of whether or not I get the spot. Um, so that's why like, I mean, I don't know. I hope I weaved it in naturally, but... Um, yeah, trying to say like, hey, I really want to do more of this. That was um, mostly directed at them and not necessarily like me just sort of randomly saying to the audience, hey, I want to do more of this. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I hope that explains that. And then the rest were pretty standard. Like, you know, the, uh, I, I actually had some conversations through email with them and they gave me a good idea of what they wanted in the video. So the rest, I'm sort of following that. But yeah, things like me introducing myself, you're going to see more of that because I already got the gig. I'm so surprised. Um, that was really exciting. So the day I sent it to them, they watched it, came back to me and were like, you're perfect. I'm just like, ah! It's exciting to have someone... Um, you know, that kind of a group be like, we like you for being you, you know, like, I'm not, um, like, I, I like gothic fashion, but I wouldn't call myself a guru or an influencer or any of that, that kind of stuff. Um, I just like to video blog my thoughts and opinions and um, being able to try on some fun stuff at the same time. I was like, ah, oh, why haven't I ever done that? I mean, I've made the occasional video about, you know, things I'm wearing. So, um, you know, like getting ready for a gig. And I think there was also one where I was just going out with a friend, um, but not really structured in the same way about, hey, I've got this, this, this top, for example, and, you know, explaining some stuff about it. Um, yeah, that was kind of interesting. So like, regardless of whether or not I was gonna get the gig, I was like, ah, oh, this could be the start of me just doing a few clothing videos. Cause I know a, a few people were like, hey, we wanna see your wardrobe. Cause you know, over a year ago, I went to Japan and brought home so much stuff. I mean, some of it I haven't even had a chance to wear because then uni happened and that kind of distracted me and now I've gotten back in the habit of lazy clothes. So I'm just got a t-shirt and, um, you know, lazy pants today <laughs> because I'm not going anywhere. It's a little bit um, wet out and cold and I have nowhere to go because what do I do with my life? I sit around on the internet, I make videos, I edit videos, Lately I've been editing so many ant videos um, and then trying to fit in my rambles in between. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, it, it's really exciting. Like, this is one of those things that I didn't expect to ever happen to me. Especially if you go back to high school me, when I was doing like heaps of maths and science and thought I was going to work in robotics and, you know, all that kind of... Um, yeah, wow, that was a long time ago. But yeah, if you went back and told high school me, hey, one day you're going to make videos and a clothing company, a gothic clothing company is going to give you free clothes. Because that's the deal, right? So um, I've got the gig. They're going to give me free clothes. Um, so I've actually just been on the computer looking through the website, but it's so hard to choose because like I would actually try on pretty much anything. There's some stuff that's like maybe less my style, but I would still try it on because it's so interesting to me. Um, 
but you know I'm trying to be sensible because you know I've also got to rank like which one do I want the most and all that kind of stuff it's really good they're actually letting me choose what I want to try on um, and you know like what I really like about this arrangement is they want me to be honest so um, like that's actually their requirement it's not like like you know you hear about some of these people who get deals or sponsorships with whoever but they have to push a certain image whereas this one they're like no we want your honest opinion like if you don't like it if it doesn't fit well we want to know about it. we want you to just say what you think um so i like that because if they were trying to force me to say something i'd be like hell no um so yeah that they want me to just be me give my opinions i'm like this is kind of this is kind of perfect for me um so yeah, I'm excited, and also the fact that it's punk rave and not like, um, what's that brand? I think Restyle I follow. Restyle I think is the one that focuses on like witch clothing and they have all those symbols and stuff on the hood and I, I like looking at it, but I'm not really in, I'm not really like, hmm, it's a bit like when I wear Christian iconography. I've got some Japanese clothes that have that and like, you kind of can't avoid it, but um, I do feel a bit awkward about wearing some of that stuff because I'm not Christian. I think some people would, um, you know, realize that because it's gothic clothing and a lot of people don't believe that goths really fit Christianity, but um, there are a lot of goths who do follow that. So sometimes I feel a little bit awkward if I'm going to be wearing that kind of stuff and I don't believe it. And I know with like witchcraft, there are actually people who practice uh, modern form of witchcraft um, and you know it's it's quite diverse the whole Wiccan thing and you know people form little covens and have rituals together and so on and um, like I know I don't have to believe that stuff to wear those kinds of clothes but it does make me feel a bit like hmm is I've already had people think that I'm vegan because well at the moment I don't but I colored my hair um, and also like you know being skinny um, people have thought I was vegan and it's kind of awkward telling them no because often the people who were asking tend to be people who hope you're vegan and then when you say you're not they get disappointed and it's a bit like awkward so um yeah I, I like with that sort of restyle and I actually haven't even gone on I'm pretty sure it's restyle I'm gonna be so embarrassed if it's a different brand but um I haven't even gone on their website um Maybe like when I first came across them I might have, but I just, I'm just like, oh, I like looking at it, but I don't know that it's really for me. Um, who else do I follow? I also follow Lip Service, I think, but they tend to be a little bit too on the sexy side for me. <laughs> um, you know, like some of the different brands have very specific styling. Um, Gallery Serpentine, who used to be in Newtown and now are like appointment only, which is sad, so I can't go there anymore. But um, because, you know, I'm not really into the fancy you know, super expensive corsets and, um, you know, they tend to have more romantic goth kind of stuff. Um, and they're doing more custom work as I understand it and like weddings and all that. Um, yeah. So I don't really feel right about making an appointment to go to their, whatever they're set up as now. I liked it when they were in Newtown cause I could just like go in have a look around. There's, um, a, a pasta shop I really like not that far away from there when they're, from where their old shop used to be um but yeah i think they were the last goth shop in sydney and now they're gone so that's sad i still follow them on facebook but uh. there's a few other brands there's like one that's more uh, maybe not steampunk but uh, what would you call it mm, it's like sort of uh they, they have kilts and things as well um but i don't uh, i don't know what you would call it maybe like a medieval kind of look um but yeah, so I legit think Punk Rave's pretty cool because they have a whole bunch of different styles and I'm going through them all going, oh my god, what do I choose? Um, because then, yeah, I've got to make sure I get the right sizes for everything and, like, even though I am, you know, like, I'm, I'm not changing size, but if it's, like, a jacket, they actually gave me advice, like, if you're going to order a jacket, just make sure you measure yourself with whatever clothes you want to wear under it to make sure that it will close up. Um, because apparently that's a problem people have is they don't take that into account. So that's some interesting stuff I didn't know because I'm not a fashion guru. So I'm kind of learning as I go along and their tips are really helpful. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so glad they liked the video because I was a little bit worried. I was like, oh, you know, I, I do the, I do structured videos sometimes, but not a whole lot. So I hope I hope it's coming across the right way. And I get... Um, a little bit self-conscious about some of my videos sometimes. Um, just like the sound of my voice, especially that one. I think when I have to do more editing, 
I get a little bit more self-conscious about the sound of my voice and you know do I sound natural because I know I have a vlog voice I know this is not really how I talk in real life unless I really get like eh, hyper about it um you know if I go on a really long rant and you just can't shut me up kind of thing um but yeah no editing my voice and hearing it over and over I start getting a bit like oh my god is that what I sound like ah so um yeah but um, no, it went pretty well. Um, so I've got to make a list of clothes I want to try on. I'll send it to them. They're going to send me stuff twice a month. Um, so I guess I will be making punk rave videos twice a month. Um, I might also, so I'll, I'll also be introducing myself twice a month. Um, I might also make like some more fashion videos if some of you guys are interested because, um, you know, I did get all that stuff from Japan. Um, it's gonna be like out of date fashion videos, but some of the stuff I think you could probably still get. I know ACDC Rag um, in Harajuku, I feel like I've seen their stuff pop up. Cause like there's that, in the punk rave video, you know I talk about the other stripy shirts I have. They're actually all the same design, just different colors. And I bought every single color. But the first time I went, this might've been in 2016, I think I bought one shirt and I liked it so much that when I went back in, you know, end of 2017, early 2018, I actually bought the rest of the colors that I could find. So there are some things that do stick around um, there. So, you know, if anyone's thinking of going to Japan for like a Gothic shopping trip, and actually I have finished my Gothic shopping Tokyo guide, which is on Patreon because I haven't got around to converting it into videos and, you know, written blogs and so on but that's something that I've thought I want to do this year is um you know get onto my wardrobe because like when I came back from Japan it was just like I had my final semester of uni so all of that stuff got put on hold it took me a year to finish the rest of that um shopping guide so you know I, if people are interested in that and um you know I've got in that guide, so it's not just like where I went to shop, it's also tips on how to shop well in Japan. Um, not some of the basic generic stuff that, you know, more mainstream people would go through. It's more like specific to gothic people. Although there are some tips in there that would help just about anyone, I think. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to try and work on getting that put out to the public. But if you're impatient, it's in my January goodies, I think. Pretty sure I put them in my January goodies. Anyway, if you if you're signing up to Patreon and you know like you should have access to all my past stuff. So um, if you can't find it because this video, I don't know how far in the future you're watching it, so it might have gotten lost. So I should actually say it's in the January 2019 goodies. Um, so there's also a chance that my Dropbox will be full if you're watching this in like two or three years time. Um, assuming no major calamity has befallen the world and, you know, internet doesn't work anymore. But um, if you are watching this in two or three years time, which is really weird to think about, but hey, I've been on YouTube for more than 10 years. Um, yeah, if you can't find it, it might be because it's deleted. So just like send me a message and I can always put it back up there, assuming my computers don't die and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so that's some plans for the rest of the year. Um, how's the lighting in this video? The lighting is actually okay. I was a little bit worried because um, it's a little bit overcast. I don't actually have any kind of fancy lighting for my videos. It's just my my phone camera is a, it's a Galaxy S7 Edge. Um, and then I've got a window over there. And so I try and film during the day when no one's in the house. I, I don't always get this much space. Today we were supposed to have the roof guy, but it's raining so he didn't come. So I've got the place to myself. Um, so I'm being lit by the windows there. And then I turned on the light. We've actually got, so, ah, oh, the roof guy, right? He's trying to fix our roof because we get, keep getting leaks, which actually I've got to keep an eye on if the rain gets any heavier, like there's supposed to be rain for a few days. I've got to keep an eye on that and put the little bucket out in case, like, you know, if it does start leaking. But um, that leak affected another part of the roof. And so because this is a Federation house, they have these weird lights. Um, let me quickly show you. Can you see that that funny light? Yeah? Oh, you even got a funny fireplace. So this. Okay, this should be on the roof. And instead what we've got. Oh, it's a little bit hard to see because um can I focus on it? I don't think so, because I'm using the wrong side of the camera. That's the problem with the selfie camera. You can't do a lot of good focusing. It's it's just the bare light. Um <laughs> 
Um, yeah, because the other one, I don't know what was going on, but dad was like up in the roof area. We've got some storage space and, you know, I don't know if he stepped on the wrong thing or just like bumped something, but whatever was holding up that fancy light on the floor, um, it broke and it was just hanging by the wire. So um, luckily with all our construction stuff going on, um, <laughs> we the electrician who, who's been helping us out was able to just like quick put something in there, make sure it's all safe and all that. So that's the light there and then the windows and that's all I've got. So it's a little bit like lighting, hey. I mean, I thought about I could just film in my room, um, which I do sometimes, but see, you're probably going to be seeing, like for me just talking, you're going to be seeing more of this white door because what I've realised, I've been talking to Paper Vampire a bit about it because like Paper Vampire has been around for ages um, talking to me about videos and stuff. So um, yeah, we still, we've been keeping in touch all this time um, and we've figured out, um, so I live in Australia. Australia's internet is a little bit, like it, it's not terrible, it's better than it used to be, but by international standards we're apparently in third world. So, um, <clears throat> uh, we have cable internet, um, so it's not too bad. We don't have the reliability issues of the NBN and we don't have like, I think the reason we switched to cable is because when we were on ADSL, which I think runs on copper, but I could be wrong, I'm a bit vague, but when we had that, anytime it rained, it just, the internet would get really patchy and we had a, an old modem that wasn't coping and all that. So we upgraded to cable. It's pretty good, but it's only around 5 up and 50 down. Um, 50 down's good, but 5 up <laughs> when you've got, you know, a 2 gigabyte video, good luck. And the problem is, these days, I'm recording in HD, and I also ramble longer, because if, you're, if you've been watching me for like 10 years or more, you remember when I had like tiny webcam, you know, 480p, or I don't even remember what it was. Um, so when the internet got better, that got so fast, uploading those, but now it's full HD. Um, and I can do, oh, so the thing about the 10 years ago or whatever is they initially gave me a 10 minute time limit, then they increased it to a 15 minute time limit, and now I've got no time limit as far as I know. So I will go for ages, um, you know, I try and keep it under half an hour because otherwise the camera um, switches over into a new file and I have to stitch them together and uh, sometimes I just can't be bothered. Um, but no, something I've realised is to get the file size down because if I just upload... Oh, I've worked out for every gigabyte it takes roughly an hour to upload, um, which is just too long. It sort of depends on the day a bit, but like, oh my god, some of the videos I've had to wait for. But what we worked out you know, big ramble to get to the point. What we've worked out is white background with the variable bitrate kind of thing actually brings the file size way down. It's really good. So I'm probably going to be filming more in the white background, like for every video if I can. Obviously I've still got some ant videos coming up and then sometimes things happen in my life elsewhere. I've had a few requests to go outdoors <laughs> and bring you with me. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to handle that because, um, my brother was considering getting a GoPro because he went on a skiing trip in Japan um, over the summer holidays and he was like, I don't know what to do with it when I get back, do, would you use it? And I was like, yes I would. Um, but it was a little like, you know, he's not a huge video guy, I'm like, what are you going to do with your footage? Are you going to start a YouTube channel or are you just going to keep it to yourself? Like, when would you watch it? And, um, you know, we were able to find a good deal on the one he wanted. I think it was the Hero 7 Black or something like that with the fancy stabilizing or whatever. But um, in the end, he decided not to get it. Um, you know, he got this really nice Surface lap, like it's not the Surface laptop. It's the, the one that you can add the foldy flappy keyboard thing. I really want one of them, but you know, money. <laughs> but anyway, so um, yeah, because he didn't end up getting the GoPro, it means I don't have a GoPro. So um, I will have to be taking this camera out and, you know, you remember problems I had with stabilizing the image and that little stabilizer thing that I was walking around with, it, it's a pain in the butt. Um, so there's that. I don't want to be taking this tripod everywhere because it's too much. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do out and about videos, but that's on my mind. Um, otherwise, 
you know, this. I suppose some exceptions, like I've been considering doing singing related videos. Um, I've, I've been thinking of like, I'm trying to join a band, but it's difficult because, um, you know, a lot of the established bands, they already have a sound, so they don't want a female singer. Um, I know there's like a growing sort of trend to recognize um, female growlers, because, um, you know, you've got Ginger is kind of getting big at the moment. Um, and then you've got all the ones who've been around for a bit longer, like what, Arch Enemy, The Agonist, In This Moment, all those guys. Um, but I think Ginger sort of raised the profile a bit because like she's just so good with what she's doing. Um, uh, so there's that, but like established bands, they already have a male sound, they don't necessarily want to change, and even though I can growl, um, first of all, I'm a false chord growler, I'm not a fry screamer, although I have been working on it, um, I just, it, it doesn't make sense to me because it still sounds so quiet, and I really like that false chord really sounds like, you know, it's coming from you and it's like beast mode instead of like, Fry, at the moment, for me, still feels like I'm just doing tricks with my voice. Um, so yeah, I can't copy a lot of the similar sounds that the dudes in a lot of these bands are doing, because most of them seem to be Fry screamers. I didn't even realise. For ages I thought, oh, it's just like my lung capacity is too small, or I'm not fit enough, and that's why I can't hold a note as long as some of these people. But no, it turns out the technique is entirely different. I'm using a very air-heavy method, and they're using fry, which um, apparently, I haven't heard many people like in the local scene do it without a microphone, but apparently without a microphone for some people it's actually really quiet compared to false chord growling, which is quite loud, like it's, it's difficult to do that quietly, although I am getting a little bit better at it, you know, as a sort of control exercise. Um, yeah, I've been doing some fun stuff with my voice. I, I might be a little bit too embarrassed to show you exactly where I'm up to, but anyway, anyway. Going on tangents, so, um, yeah, a lot of the established bands, not interested, as soon as you mention you're a chick, you know, a lot of them won't even give you a chance, but I also kind of understand because I can't do the exact same sounds, and even, even if I can do the same kinds of, like, the same method of growling, the fact that I'm female and my physiology is this way, I will still sound different, like, I think if you're not used to hearing growlers, maybe you can't tell the difference between male and female, but... Um, after listening to a few, I can tell the difference between most male and female growlers. There are only a handful that kind of cross it over and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if that's a, a, a guy or a girl. Um, so there, there is still a difference, even though you're making what's essentially like a variation on white noise a lot of the time. So there's that. And then I really want to do singing like as well, like clean singing, not just growling, because I can do both. Why, why wouldn't I? And it's kind of fun having the contrast between the really high sort of girly stuff and then the like beast kind of thing. That's what I really want. Um, so established bands not going so well. And then I've also gotten, oh, there are a few people who wanted to do like a one-off collab with me, but, um, and I'm totally up for that because I think that would be really fun and interesting to like work on someone else's music for a change. Um, but uh, no one's really ready for that. They've kind of just like put up, hey, what do you think about this idea? When we have something, you know, we'll let you know. And I'm like, okay. Um, I suppose I should follow up just to see like if anyone's up to something and has just forgotten. Um, but yeah, so that's not really me being in a band, that's just me helping out. Like there's a potential that if they wanted to do it live, I could turn up and like do a guest spot for one song, but um, it's not a band, so it doesn't really fill that thing for me. Um, so the other problem I'm having is, um, you know, I'll get individual musicians approaching me, or um, bands just starting, you know, not really together yet, like there's one that I've been talking to where the guys haven't actually met each other in person, so, you know, who knows, like they're getting along online, but who knows what it's going to be like in person, because I have met people um, who I first met online and then meet in person, and sometimes it's really awkward, because it, it's a different form of communication, and you actually, you know, see what the person's like, you know, and then how you actually behave, all your mannerisms, how you actually speak instead of like the written version where you've had time to think about it, edit it, all that kind of stuff. So it's a different experience, who knows if they're going to get on well. Um, but uh, yeah, the thing with a lot of like the people who are just starting out, the individual musicians who approach me, all that kind of stuff is um, quite often they're not in my style. Um, 
they're not the right level of experience, they're not the right level of commitment, um, there, there's all kinds of problems I'm bumping into in that sort of thing and it's sort of making me think, ah, oh, maybe I should just start my own band. I mean, I've got my solo stuff, but the, like, you know, with the solo stuff I can't really do the guitars because I suck at guitar, so um, I would have to get, like, work with someone anyway. In which case, let's just make it a band, because I know a few other musicians who might still want to work with me. Like, we've sort of undenied about it over the years, but maybe if I actually start something, you know, I might be able to get them on board. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, um, I really need, I think what I really need is, like, a writing partner. Um, wait, why am I talking about music? I don't even remember how I got onto this subject. Um, shit. Wow, I actually don't remember. This is just a tangent that's gone way whatever. Why was I talking about music? Oh, I was gonna do more music related videos. <laughs> and then I was talking about my band problems. Okay, so wrapping up the band problems, I got four minutes left. Um, so I sort of been thinking I should start my own band because reasons and then I can have a little bit more control over it and if I'm going to put in so much work I want it to be more my thing. I'm not going to revive Rainbow Death Ray at this point because I would have to change so much stuff that I might as well just start another band anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so um, thinking of starting another band but I really need to up my own writing skills I think um, and then hopefully find a guitarist that I can maybe write with. Um, with the view of starting a band, but you know, it's easier if I just learn to write the kinds of guitar I like to an approximate level and then when I get a band together I can be like, hey guitarist, this is what I've got, this is like my vague idea but I need you to interpret it for me. You know, maybe that. But so I've got to improve my writing skills, I've been watching some tutorials, I've been listening to music a little bit more. Um, and what I'm thinking might help with that is if I start deconstructing some songs um, and also like, you know, with the vocal styles, I'm trying to get my vocals to be like, you know, try different vocals. I'm running out of time. I, I was hoping to show you some of the um, stuff that I've been doing to get more control over my voice. Um, it's weird. Someone told me, hey, when you're 30, your voice settles down and, you know, it becomes more mature and you can do more stuff. And actually I am finding that, but I don't know if it's cause I'm 30 or because I've just been practicing. <laughs> so, you know, it's probably a bit of both. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling better about my voice at the moment and like being able to control different things, you know, that I didn't really ever think I could control. Um, anyway, so with that in mind, I need to increase my writing skills so I should deconstruct some songs because if I'm going to do cover songs of like metal and industrial, it's really hard to get backing tracks. So I probably have to make my own, but then I can't do anything normally and I don't play guitar well. So I'd probably have to turn it into turn everything into a sort of industrial kind of track. So I'm going to put my own spin on it and at the same time deconstruct their songs, put my own spin on it. Probably it would turn into another song anyway, I don't know. But um, just get a better idea of how other people are writing songs so I can get my head around it more. I think I need more practice. Um, I think that's a problem is like I don't do enough songwriting practice. So when I sit down to write a song and find that I'm, I've got serious writer's block, it's probably because I haven't done enough analysis, enough practice, blah, 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 blah. So, and then also practice more different types of singing and like maybe my voice doesn't, work the same way as a lot of other people's voices. Um, I have some quirks in my voice and my range. So reinterpreting other people's songs. Like, you know, there's some Arch Enemy songs where I'm like, this really needed melody. Maybe I could do an Arch Enemy song reinterpreted to have clean singing, you know, instead of just rhythmic growling. Um, been thinking about that, so I might do some... Um, some kind of like music videos. Uh, I'll definitely like if I do it, I'll definitely make the tracks and then put them on Patreon for my patrons to see. Um, and then if it's not too embarrassing, <laughs> maybe I'll make videos, but we'll see. So that's another reason why you might not see the white door, but for everything else, I'll do the white door. And I think that's probably what the point was of that whole music tangent. Ah, and now we're up to like 30 minutes and I'm going to um, edit another ant video, and then edit this video, and then probably another ant video, and then after that I think I might be running out of ant videos, finally. Um, because there's been less and less ha new things happening with them, so I've been filming them less and less, so we can move on to something else. Um, trying, trying, trying to keep up daily videos, but without, like, dodgy ant videos, I think that's gonna get harder, because it does, like, I do have to film videos like this on particular days, 
So we'll see. Um, maybe I can do some other kind of pointless video to fill in the gaps, but yeah. All right, 30 minutes, we're done. I will see you guys in the next video, whatever that may be. Bye. It seems as though